Okay, so yesterday uh, we started learning about yum, and uh, the moment you type yum, um, this is the package we need, but it has dependencies. So what yum does is it calculates all that and uh, download that for you. So you don't have to worry about too much about it. So one thing I want to point out is the RPM. Yesterday, RPM is the name of a command, and also dot RPM is the uh, extension of the package. Okay, so the command RPM is also a download, uh, installing the package with the extension .rpm and yum is also downloading and managing the uh, extension .rpm, okay? So I think I explained yesterday, right, what uh, the extension of the file is. So in Windows it's .exe typically, and in uh, for usually for Red Hat it's .rpm. Okay, so rpm. QI. Okay, uh, let me see if it's showing here. Okay, here. Look at it here. The source RPM. Okay, so. It says the short name is GZF, version is 1.5, release is 10.EL, architecture, okay. So all this, all this information here from name, version and architecture is also a part of a RPM name. And then the source RPM is, this is the name here, dot RPM. You see the extension, it ends with dot extension here. So let's see here if I missed anything. Okay, so then we learned about yum. To package using yum.
Okay. So let's uh, move ahead here. Okay, so what I'm going to show next is, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, yum, show duplicates. Okay, so what I'm going to do is yum. If you want to see uh, what is installed on the system, you see what yum list installed. Okay, so you have you have this many information uh, listed in here. So let's see the package name. Okay, so I'm not sure. Can you see any difference in here? Do you see anything that is bold? Uh, in here. Okay. So I'll show you how to read this here. Um... Get info on the package. Okay, so these, these are some color coded here. Let's see how we're going to read this here, okay? So what I'm going to do is... Uh, um, let me make a table here. So, so the table is...
Give me one second here. not uh, okay so the output output usually is color coded here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type here name uh, now if the output is bold if the output is bold then uh, update update in repository is available Okay, and if it's bold and underlined, then that means this is a current kernel. We'll talk about what kernel is. Okay, and if the output is red, then um, the package doesn't exist in repo anymore. And if the color is yellow, so, so you have the package is newer than what is in a repo. So let, let's uh, read this together here. Let me set this as a default settings here and uh, let me see if the output is going to be different. <laughs> default foreground Okay, so usually the foreground is in this color here, right? So, yeah, I'm in list install. Change settings, colors, modify. Okay, anyway, here, so we have, we have this uh, things here. So in here, anything which is bold is, uh, is update available here. Can you see anything bold in here? I don't, uh, 
Okay. To see the um, package, okay. So you run this command. Yum. Yum list installed. So we'll come to this here. So if the color, if it's if the if it's saying if you see something is in bold, okay, then the update is available. Bold and underline. So I take this one is bold and underline. So our party is not showing uh, correctly here. Okay, so this is bold and underline, and I hope all these all these which are which are uh, like uh, white in color these are all updates is available for this okay and if something which is red then what it is is the color so what I'm gonna do is uh, let me run another command here Liam list updates Base uh, updates. Okay, let's work on which what is installed first. Okay, so I'm gonna give an example here. <coughs> So let's see here. I'm going to make three sections. First will be name. Second is package. And third is repo. So let's take a look at the first one here. So I'm going to copy this. Oops. So this one if you're seeing this here in white this is this is in bold here okay unfortunately we can't see is a bold in here but that's what it is oh god so the package name package name is network manager and the package number and this is the package number and repo okay if if it says anaconda here that means it came from DVD this package came from DVD okay installed from DVD here uh, it says a repo anaconda slash base at base so it this package was installed using the DVD that means 
it came uh, when we installed using the uh, ISO okay or right, let's move to the next one so this is bold this this is in bold and the second one is uh, if the package is in red here so let's see which package is in red okay this package is in red okay so this is not available anymore the package if it's in red it's not available from repo in the package number and it came from DVD uh, I'm gonna say DVD okay so as long as it says anaconda it came from DVD DVD in the sense uh, we install it using the ISO okay anybody have any question here I'm what I'm saying here it installed from the DVD that means ISO so uh, what do you mean by ISO yeah the one you downloaded okay and let's go in here remember you downloaded here this one uh, what is this one here this this puppy here remember we, you downloaded this you downloaded this here actually what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to make a DVD out of it but we are using a virtual box so we don't need to and it's in dot ISO format okay so in here it says DVD And the kernel, <laughs> kernel is bold and underlined. So, kernel version. I'll explain you what kernel is. It's a very, it's a very important, very basic. Uh, you have to have a kernel for the operating system to be working. Okay, uh, this is. Uh, it came from DVD too. Okay, so this one is I'm gonna copy this format here. Bold and at the same time if it's underlined, that means this is a kernel. And uh, so anything yellow is um, anything showing yellow is the package is newer in repository. So th this this is available for update here, okay?
Okay, so let's see if I could grab for Wireshark. Mm, HTTPD. Okay, it says uh, the red package that doesn't exist in repo anymore. Okay, so we install this, but uh, over here it says these packages doesn't exist in repo. But this is what we installed, right? Yesterday, which HTTPD and uh, CD Okay, let's compare this here. Oh, shoot. Give me one second here, okay? Okay, I'm back. So let's compare this here, uh, 2.14693 EL and this one is also 2.693 EL. Package does not, package doesn't exist in repository. Okay, I'll come back to this uh, red one here, why, the, why this is showing here. It's supposed to be, uh, but when, we, when I did yum list installed, Okay, yeah, the only package, when you do the regular list, yum list installed, this is the, uh, okay, by the way, all these are installed on our system right now, okay? So, the one which is bold here, that means the update is available, okay? And the yellow, 
is we, we have newer version than what's in repository. Okay. And the one which is bold and underlined is a kernel. We're going to go a little bit deep about what kernel is. I'll, I have to explain you this. And this is very important. Okay. And then the red. I think we are seeing only one here when we do the regular um, grab. I mean regular uh, yum list installed. Only one is showing here as uh, red here. This one. This one. So... <clears throat> this is installed on our system here but it's not available in repo here so when we do next update here is going to be gone this one looks uh, the same too though but uh, okay one two seven six five two All right, anyway, let's move on here, okay? So now, if you want to do the updates here, you type yum list updates. So you have all these updates coming down, wc-l. So for this particular system, you have 148 updates available. That doesn't mean everything is installed on, our, on your system here. It could be trying to bring down some updates that is recommended here. So, but you just don't go and blankly do all the updates, okay? You have to check with your teammates or the company policy what, what you need to do if those updates apply to your company or not okay so yum list this is this is how you gonna uh, these are all the updates here. So right now we got 130 updates. Okay. 130 updates available. These packages may or may not be available or uh, may or may not be installed uh, uh, may or may not be installed on system okay so this is pretty generic here but what do you want to do uh, is you want to see the packages but not installed Okay, you want to get the list of packages which are not installed. So the command is yum list available. Okay. So let's see how many are available here. Um, okay. So you have about 10,292, which are available here. So that doesn't mean you need to install those. Yum list available. It 
Yum. Uh, are all the packages installed? Now I'll take this back here. Uh, these are the packages installed on the system and update is available. So let's see here if this has any colors okay if you have a color so how how this works here is let me do this here again Okay, let me do this here. These are all the packages installed here. So from the output, so I have here information. Okay. So if the output is blue, if the color is blue, that means that an update is uh, an update is installed. Uh, no, an update to uh, an installed package. So this package, if you see blue here, the package is installed and the update is available for it, okay? And if you see the color cyan, these are all blue. Okay. Sorry, sir, I missed. So uh, the blue means that uh, the package that is installed for it, the update is available, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And if the cyan is, if the color is cyan, um, so the downgrade, downgrade to an install package is available. Or downgrade. So sometimes what happens is if you install a package and what happens is if you install a package then after after a while from the internet repo app store they remove the old version and and just leave the new version in place okay but later on if they find out if there is a problem going on with the new update what they do is they will they will put the old uh, old uh, package back in the system uh, uh, back in the app repo okay what will happen is if you think uh, if you're having a problem you could go down and see if you could go downgrade it okay but once you install a new package they they will not remove it from the repo right away they'll keep the old one also so that you could go download the old one and uh, if the system is green and uh, the output I mean the, they have 10,000 outputs here so it's not showing everything in here 
so let's see here if I could uh, if I could uh, I'm doing this here right what is gonna happen here what am I doing here I'm doing a redirector so what what is it gonna do It's going to write in this uh, file package.txt. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And then if you have like green and underline, so the current package is. current version of an install package. So let's go into VI package. Okay, obviously we have hundreds in here. Okay, so out of this, we don't have the current version. So this is what it is. If you if you go ahead and see green and underline, this, this is what it is, okay? All right, good. So let me quit this. So if you see uh, the default behavior, yum, list, all. Okay, so yum list. So if you want to see all the list, list here, this is all the packages here. So this is a default behavior. So default behavior. yum list all so what is doing here is yum list all and yum list it's the same thing it's going to bring all the all the packages which you could ever installed so it should be about the same, 10,000 WCF and L. Okay, yeah. So th these are the packages which are available, or, or list which are available. Um, no, which are, regardless if it's installed or not, it's there. So if you want to see if the package has been replaced, uh, the command is yum list 
obsolete. Obsolete. So. Okay, so this package, this package used to be there and it has, uh, these, these two packages got replaced here. It used to be this package that got replaced with this package here. Okay, so yum list all, oh, absolute. So if you want to see all versions of package, okay, so if you want to see all the versions of package, yum, you do hyphen hyphen show duplicates list available. So if you see in here, you have uh, the similar naming conventions here. So if you want to see all the versions here, you could you could download here. Now over here, version means this particular one here is i86 that means it's 32 bit and this is a 64 bit okay so you have a do you guys know what 32 bit and 64 bit or at least heard of heard of it sir but uh, not exactly sure i think it's yeah. uh, the Processor structure, something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Processor structure, and you know, actually, everything is sixty-four bit here these days. So I'm not sure why would uh, they still have thirty-two bit, but uh, I think that the developers they're still making thirty-two bit just in case. Here's another thing here. The beauty of Linux is you could find like a very old computer, at least 20 year old computer and you could uh, definitely install the new version on it. The new Linux, if you have a uh, Red Hat 7, you could definitely install that one there. You could definitely install it on one of the old older computers and it should work without any problems. So if I do WC here, it should be double in size here. Yeah. Okay, so 11,000. 11,000 updates. So don't worry about those too much here. So we already have... Uh, uh, So, also, if you want to see the dependency list, you do em dip list httpd. Okay, so what this is showing here is um, 
yesterday when we installed here, it installed the dependent packages here, right? It installed the HTTPD and it installed dependent packages which are four. So in total it installed five here. So now when we did a dependency list here, uh, what these are, these are the dependent files that HTTPD need. So all these are not all these are not the ones it installed. These are some of the ones which are already installed. These are shared files. Okay, so in a Windows operating system, when you install a package, there, there are group of files which are shared by many applications. Okay, do you, do you agree? If you go and randomly delete something inside C drive, into the program files folder, it may cause serious problem here because there are some files which are dependent on each other. Uh, let's see, there are some system files which will, which will be shared with other file, uh, other, op, other packages here. So these are, this is the list of dependencies. Okay, so these are so far we looked at the single packages and now I'm going to talk about the group packages here. Okay, so the packages could be single or it could be package or uh, part of a group. Here I say package is a, a is software. Okay, and then the group package is group software. So you could install utilities which would be a part of group here so it's a, like a big package you could install all those utilities it comes in a bundle okay so let's look at that so you type yum list right so the command is yum group list so it's going to get you the group of packages okay so available available groups so th these are these are the group of packages here so in each packages, in each group, it has a lot of other, um, lot of other uh, packages in it. So we'll take a look here in a moment. Okay, and there is also something called hidden. Okay, so there are some uh, group of packages which are hidden. I don't know why they kept it hidden here. Um, you could use some of these are like for virtualization and advanced uh, engineering. So if you end up landing in an engineering job, you'll be really lucky. But it comes with a lot of burden here. There, there are some jobs within Linux here which are very burdensome. So, but you have to have grow, 
into the job for a while here before you do that. But anyway, so th there is also this command here that will show you any list that are hidden also, okay? It will bring up the list at the same time it will bring up any hidden ones here. Let me see if it's true. Uh, so under available groups compatibility lab libraries um, yeah so it's bringing up the same 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 group and at the same time it's bringing up the hidden files hidden groups Okay, so let's see here. So let's see here, development. Okay, so now let's let's pick up one here, development, and then we'll look inside what's what's in it here. Okay, so I'm gonna type yum group info. Okay, and then I'm gonna put in codes development tools. Okay, so here you see, <clears throat> you see some of them has, some of them has like a plus sign before it, and uh, some of the packages doesn't have a plus sign before it, right? So I'll tell you what it means. Okay, so um, mandatory. Does it have a minus sign here? Okay. So the group uh, will have minus, plus, um, equals, equal sign, and uh, blank space. Okay, so... Let's do this here. So if it, if it has a pre okay, let me see a prefix. Prefix uh, description. Okay, so 
if it has like a minus sign and what is this a package package was not installed so do we have any minus sign here in this now package was not installed and won't be installed as a part of group okay and plus if you have a plus like this one has a plus sign before it right this one has a plus sign before it what it means is package was not installed but will be installed on a next upgrade and if you have a equal sign in there uh, package was installed as part of group and then if you have like a blank space so package was installed but not as a part of the group okay so these are some development tools uh, which are already in there so this is what it is if uh, if you have a plus sign that means the package was not installed but would be installed in next upgrade so when you do the next upgrade for the development environment development tools i'm sorry it will install it okay and then the plus sign what is it package was not installed but would be installed in next upgrade and uh, equal sign is package was installed part of a group so we don't we don't have anything that has a package in here with uh, equal sign and the one with blank space so all these are with blank space package was installed but not as a part part of a group here so somehow these packages came down either from the dvd or as a part of a operating system okay all right so mandatory uh, these are the mandatory default okay also you could search for a whim you could search for a package here so yum search httpd so if you want to search for a packet you could search also this is this will come down as uh, let me clear this um, yum search uh, vi Okay, MS mismanaged whim. Let's do HTTPD. So, when you do like a search here, what it's doing is it's just matching matching anything that has HTTPD in it. HTTPD in it so yeah just ignore this 
if you want to search this is what the this is how you could search it here but i don't think it's any useful search for our packages so you could do em search httpd okay and also you could add like search all so it's going to search through all inside all your all your operating system is going to search through all these things here okay and um, also yum list uh, grab httpd yeah well you know this it sounds senseless at this moment here but uh, you need to have some working experience before you understand what is going on here but uh, you when you type yum list is checking through all the uh, through the repo here and it's grabbing for httpd and anything which is matching httpd is bringing up the results here so this is not these are just the uh, searches you're doing it. You're not doing anything important here, okay? So don't worry too much about it. I'm just showing you how you could do a search on a particular, if you just think of, if you just think of something which is partial, but you don't know the name of the entire um, package, all you could do is just put it as a search. And hopefully that will bring up some results here, okay? So maybe if you if you know something like partial like this, you could type this in. It will bring up the results that starts with stt. This is uh, stt. It should bring up some with httpd. Yeah, right here. It's just the silly silly results of how you would do it. I mean the search search criteria. Okay. What else? Uh, so, you want to you want to see if uh, uh, yeah, you want to see if the package is available. You type yum provides. Okay. So let's see uh, how you would install and remove. I'll show I showed you how to install, right? I already showed you how to install. Now what I'm gonna show you is how to remove the package. Okay. Remove uh, package. So removing a package is uh Let's see, yum, uh, which HTTPD, right? Okay, let me show you how to download the package here, okay? If you don't want to install it, but you want to download it. So how are you gonna do that? Uh, first you have to install, mm, let me see. If you want to download only, download only the package. So what you're gonna do is, first you have to install the package that helps you install 
download only yum install yum uh, plugin download only okay so install this package first So now you could use the command to download the package only, okay? Uh, the command you use is, uh, let me do ls. Here I'm going to make a directory, mkdir rpm. And I'm going to cd in there. Uh, cd rpm. I'm going to clear. I'm going to pdw. Now I'm going to see if i want to install uh download only the http software here okay when you do yum install httpd it's automatically downloading it for you okay uh, i mean downloading and installing it for you but if you want to just simply download the package what you do is yum install then you pass the command download only download only and then uh, you give the directory name okay so you give download dir what is the download directory you want to download it you could give the full path or uh, the I'm going to download here and I'm going to download httpd okay Uh, already installed mm. so I'm going to clear I do ls and l so what it did is uh, I installed the program netcat but it also had installed the dependencies so how do you know yum provides uh, nc uh, okay um, how do we check uh, what is dependencies here yum list uh, yum install yum provides uh, or you could do this here yum install nc nc is a package that you could use for network here okay before you do yes install one one dependent packages here so it installed it installed Two, uh, it downloaded two packages here because one is dependent package so now now here's a question that comes in here why is efficient then rpm if you do ls hyphen l you see uh, we want to install one package here You do ls hyphen l we want to install n ncat nc is the package we want to install but it has a dependent package here so if you're going to be using rpm to install it i mean uh, it's not humanly possible for you to know what are the dependent packages you have to do so for you to do install you have to do rpm 
and then you have to run this command to install this so this is not very efficient so if we go up here Okay, so here we ran we a bunch of uh, RPM commands here, right? So uh, let's see here. Find the document. RPM hyphen Q LP. Okay, so uh, before that here, let me show you one more command here. Uh, if you're installing this package here, there is a command you could find out where is this package gonna be installed here, okay? So you type rpm hyphen qlp and the name of the package. So what'll, what'll, what the output will be is what would be output will give you the information where are where will all this uh, package uh, will write the files to right now if you go there this this package doesn't exist okay this information doesn't exist but once the moment you install this what will happen is it will create all these files in there okay so this comes in handy if you are installing it beforehand so let me put this here uh, to get a list of packages uh, list of files um, location where it uh, will be written to okay so you have to give rpm hyphen qlp this will this will give you the information that uh, where all this information will be um uh, so this is what it says shows shows the list of files and location where it will be installed okay so that is one other thing i want to show you and uh, did I do and if you want to check the man pages manual pages uh,
manual pages for RPM command, you just type man RPM, right? If you know, if you want to know how the command you want to use, I think I already showed you man, right? Man RPM, what man command is? It's a it's a full on documentation that tells you how the specific commands work. Okay, so you could read up on that. Let me see RPM hyphen QL. Okay, so what you could do is you could see this here, and uh, you run this command here if you want to see beforehand if the package is installed or not you run this command here So I have a small question. So if we have to see uh, this last instance that you're talking about, so we have to write the whole name of this package yeah. like with all these. Uh, yes. uh, okay. So let's see if we could do it for uh, yum uh, provides httpd. Httpd is installed, right? So let's take a look here. Uh, let's copy this and. Uh, you type rpm hyphen ql uh, so if you're getting an output like this then it's installed okay where is gonna stop yeah if you if you're getting a output like this then uh, let me see if it's uh, so. Hold on. Uh, HTTPD. Okay, so I have this here. I'm going to put dot RPM. Uh, Uh, what is the command rpm hyphen query q list it says it's not installed yeah but this is not the full name here this is the what is the full name for this uh, hold on Okay, uh, yeah, I'm install HTTPD, yeah, I'm list uh, installed. Yeah, I mean, the the full name would be a little bit different here, dot, so let's see here. It's not like clear cut here. Sometimes it may not be like dot, uh, 
RPM. It will have some uh, something else in here before it says dot RPM here. But, but so if you if you have if you run this here, and if it's uh, nothing is coming up, that means it's uh, not installed. Cutie, uh, RPM. If you want to see, check if the package is installed or not, okay. No, actually, I don't think this is the no. I'm oh, you know what? I'll take this back here. Uh, if you want to check package, uh, query list QL stands for query list. And um, if you want to check if the package is uh, um. So this is also the RPM way here. So we had a way here to see all the files that yum is doing it, right? Uh, search, uh, uh, if you download only package yum, group list, group, uh, List obsolete list. So this is also uh, the same thing as dependencies. Dep list here. Yum, dep list, httpd. Okay, so this is the same thing as. Uh, no, it's not the same thing. What am I looking at? Group list, list obsolete, list all, list updates. Yum list install. Did I, I think I already covered this or something. Give me one second here. Okay, yeah, over here I already co covered this here. 32 location, zip location as well. Okay, yeah, ignore this. I'm going to take this out. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't worry about this here. I already showed you that. Okay, so... Uh, if you want to install using the RPM way, uh, if you want to query and install, let's see here. Okay, yeah, this is this is what it is. So I shouldn't have been showing you that one here. So this is uh, when you run this command here. Uh, 
okay this is where this is where when this package is not installed yet but this is where all this package will either update those files or create those files here when this package gets installed okay so let's move along here so i think i'm uh, we are end of this here so almost close let me finish this clearly uh, and uh, well, let me see what else uh, So let me go down here. Okay, so once we have downloaded only, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, um, If you if you don't specify the directory like here we specified the directory here right where are we gonna download this yum install plugin only so here <coughs> here we have downloaded this uh, NC. And we provided the look directory location here, right? Okay, so download only to a specific directory. So Okay, but if you don't specify this here uh yum download only nc let's see where it goes okay so it it has downloaded but it's not telling us where it, where it goes right they told us so the location of the default download directory is uh location of the default download directory okay so what is the default download directory i'm going to clear this you go to cd var and then you go to cache and yum and then uh, let's see yep a7 and then what else you have uh base and then you should have a folder named packages, okay? So there's a folder named packages in here. I'm gonna do ls an l. And it, by default, it installed in this directory here, okay? Default yum download directory. Default yum yum download directory, okay? Just remember that. So if you want to install um, so you have downloaded and you want to install the local install right so what is the command you do it 
is pretty simple here yum then you have to do local install you do ls hyphen l then you do yum local install local install and then you give you give the you give the package name here what it's going to do is it's going to automatically download the uh, automatically download the dependencies also okay so let me hit enter it's telling you uh, do you want to install this package yes there you go it did install the local install here uh install downloaded package uh, using yum okay so you all you all are with me here right don't stress too much on this just go through this document only once here. You should be good. Don't, don't stress too much on it. Okay. And if you want to like refresh it, you can reinstall the package. Um, so what you could do is you could reinstall the package from download so what you could do is you do yum all you have to do is change to reinstall if you need to reinstall package here you do reinstall and the package name okay reinstall It's pretty simple. Okay, and uh, the And if you want to do sometimes what happened very rarely sometimes what happened there are some packages which are broken so what you could do is uh, install um, to install skipping broken packages long time ago i used to see uh, sometimes the packages were broken but you barely really need to do this here so what you could do is yum reinstall okay then you do skip broken okay and uh, name of the package here so which is uh, this one here So if it's if it's broken or if you need to skip it, it will it will automatically do it for you. Okay.
So now let's look at the upgrades. Uh, so let's look at the upgrades here. So for that, So what you have to do is you have to do yum list install and then you have to grab for uh, uh, for example nc netcat let's see what comes up. Okay, and then there is a also command you could do is list uh, yum list updates. Actually, this is the first command I was going to show you yum list updates. So this will list show you the list of updates you could do. I showed you this already, right? Yum list updates. Yum, yeah. So I'm gonna say yum list. Uh, I'm going to do sort. So let me find something here. Grab. Uh, Grab uh, and cat. So, so when you run this here, if, if there is no specific uh, update for that specific uh, software, it won't show. It just shows uh, the updates which are required, which is available for the installed and which is uh, need updates here. Okay, so this one will show. Yum list updates. Let's see here. Grab X org.
not this one here, yum. No, not this one I looked for. Here, so let me clear this. Which MC? So let me try to uh, let me try to run the upgrade for this here. Okay, so yum upgrade and then the list. So no such command, uh, okay. So I'm gonna say yum list install. So this, this is already installed here and then the upgrade is not there. So let me grab this here. I'm going to search for this. Yum search. Ah. Shouldn't have done that. I'm going to do search for Tune Monarch. Oh, God. So, not there. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to this ne next time here. But if you want to remove something, if you want to remove the package here, all you have to do is yum, remove, httpd. And what will, what will happen is it will, it will gracefully remove this. Okay, so when it removes it, it will not remove the, it will, it will not remove the dependencies here. Okay, so, uh, yum, remove, to remove package. <coughs> so, sir, that means like, it's just removing like a software's files. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah but it's not, it's not going to remove the dependencies. Okay. Like, what do you mean by dependencies? Like, I'm not getting it. So, what do you mean you're not getting it? I'm showing you. Um, I showed you here, right? When you do yum install, HTTPD, uh, uh, it has uh, our dependencies. Yum, what it does is it, it will go through and Look for the dependencies here. So this one is a bad example here. Let me do yum reinstall and see. Okay, uh, it will look for dependencies resolved. So dependencies means like uh, the software updated files, right? No. When you when you install a package, it uh, the sometimes you have to install more than one package for that package to be working here. Right here we installed uh, HTTPD, and we have four dependencies here, right? When you use yum install oh, okay. HTTP, uh, yeah. Uh, so, but when you uh, remove okay. it, it won't remove the dependencies. So, if you want to remove the dependencies, um, you have to uh, use this command here. 
EM remove to remove the package you so if you do this here And, and what if, if we just entirely remove the software, uh, like, uh, means like a packet? Yeah, I mean, you can it's, delete it. So is, does it gonna remove the dependencies or uh, you have to do it separately? No, you have to do it separately. Uh, separately, okay. Okay, so, no, you said no here, but if you want to, um, remove the package and the dependencies you have to type this command here um, em auto remove let me clear the screen em auto remove httpd okay so to remove the package but not but not dependencies and uh, to remove package and dependencies. Okay, so you type em httpd auto remove. What will happen is it will remove the dependencies for you. So actually it will say remove one package and four dependencies which it does match up here because when we installed installed here yum httpd it installed the package it installed the package and installed four dependencies okay so you have to use auto remove here but be careful how you're using it uh, if you're gonna use this if you install this like a year ago, since then the package is being used. Uh, the <coughs> excuse me, the other dependencies are being used with some other package. Then you could run into some problems here. So this is where the teamwork comes in. You have to check with your teammates and see uh, what is going on here. Okay. So before I close this, uh, there is a. Uh, uh, so you do a yum like you, if you are using auto remove command so you that means you are entirely removing everything and the dependencies and the dependencies yeah so that, it, this is going to be in that scenario but if if it's like something if we just want to remove like a two dependencies and and the but not the package like we need two dependencies dependent needs dependence and a, and a package so then we won't gonna use auto remove right no you won't okay. use uh, uh, auto remove here you have to uh single-handedly remove the package yes, here which i don't recommend it's going to cause a lot of problems okay so next thing is uh, security i think we went out of uh, time here so we'll catch up next week okay Okay, sir. And if you have any uh, questions, put it in the chat here, please. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, I just asked you last week something, sir. I was waiting for it. Uh, 